All right, we are back, a root source here, and we're interviewing Jeff Barnard, um, a Jewish a father, didn't know it for many years, a scientist, Correct. Um, a frequent visitor to Israel, uh, brought his wife here. They both felt like uh, they, they just happened to speak with someone who said, you know, there's a home being built here in Arad. They felt a, felt a call, began the process, made Aliyah. Um, and so you've been here in the land for uh, for uh, over ten years. No, not as long quite. as that. No, we we began the process of making Aliyah as soon as we were able to buy the house. It took a few years to complete, largely because I was going backwards and forwards, backwards okay. and forwards, because I was still working in England. But my <coughs> so my my work came to an end. The grant came to an end in two thousand and nine, and in fact, we got citizenship. Um, around September 2009, we actually came and lived here from February 2010. So okay. we've, we've nearly been here seven years. Okay, okay. Seven years, that's a good number. That is a good number. So you have a book. Uh, tell us the title and the story behind, behind yes. it. Well, one, the title of one of my books is, a, is called Is It Safe? Is It Safe? And that's... it is an interesting issue because there are differences of opinion theologically as to whether Israel now yes. is the only safe place for Jewish people. You know, there are many people who think the worst is still to come. Right. People speak, for example, of the time of Jacob's trouble, which is mentioned in Jeremiah chapter 30. Very famous phrase. Yes, very famous phrase, but for many people it is equated with what we know or what we think we know about a period of time which is called the Great Tribulation. Yes, yes, now, very commonly associated with yes, that. Yes, yes, the two things go hand in hand. Consequently, if that were to be true, then the worst is still to come. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of the things that I have been involved with over many years is the issue of Aliyah. Of course, I have made Aliyah as it happens, but we've been involved with many organizations, Christian organizations, that have tried to facilitate uh, Aliyah mm -hmm. for Jewish people from across the world in the main to begin with from the former Soviet Union. One of my foundational beliefs is also a verse, this time in Jeremiah chapter 31, he who scattered Israel will gather them and watch over his flock like yes. a shepherd. You know, when all is said and done, you know, I'm not perceived to be Jewish, I don't have a Jewish mother and all that sort of thing. At the end of the day, only the Lord knows who constitute what we could call as Israel or more particularly the remnant of Israel because mm -hmm. historically, even geographically, we're really only talking of a remnant that is to return to the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Only the Lord knows who is part of that remnant, but they're all going to come, that's the fact. Now the question for us is, is the Lord bringing his people back for a holocaust that is ostensibly greater than the holocaust during the Second World War? What does that say about the Lord? In my opinion, the Lord is bringing his people back to the land because this is the only safe place now for Jewish people. And if Jewish people are watching this, from other parts of the world. I want to say this, you really need to seek the Lord because you need to return to the land. The Lord wants you back here, not for Holocaust. The Lord wants you back here because here you will be safe. That's not to say there's not gonna be trouble. There's a difference between trouble and safety. But this primarily is the safe place for Jewish people. Consequently, when is the time of Jacob's trouble? Well, uh, did this come to you a, a, in a certain period time? Was it a, a process of this? Was it your own 
uh, decision to come here and that, that you what what caused you to look into this issue and well, to come to this conclusion? I think one of the lovely things that took place, you know, during the nineteen nineties was the ability to to speak in various different places. Of course by that time a great deal of my focus and thoughts was the nation of Israel. Okay. So I was able to do a lot of systematic teaching, what the Bible says, particularly about the future of Israel. And I suppose that was one of the factors that began to mould my thinking about uh, the whole issue of yes. the time of Jacob's trouble. I think it has to be true that my association with Rick, and more particularly with the Fountain of Tears, also has sharpened my understanding of this concept. Now, it's very interesting because Rick declares himself not to be a theologian. And I have to accept that that's true. He's an artist. But the thing that so inspires me is that everything that the Fountain of Tears stands for and displays and represents, in my opinion, is so in tune with Scripture. Out of the ashes of the Holocaust, this nation has been re-established. You cannot dispute it. It is a historical fact yes. that in the years following the Second World War, there was for a very brief moment in time, when all is said and done, international sympathy for the Jewish people. That's right. And within that sympathy, it was agreed at the United Nations, for example, the situation yes. is very different yes. today. But in 1947, the vote was taken, and out of that opportunity, the nation of Israel was re-established in 1948. It triggered a war. Tell me something I don't know. Right. But the Lord is now watching over his flock like a shepherd. Now, if you go back to the passage in Jeremiah chapter 30, cries of fear are heard. It speaks about it talks about the time of Jacob's trouble, but if you continue through both chapter 30 and into 31, you see, in my opinion, a chronological sequence. Their burden, their confinement in the nations is broken. They come back to the land. Oh. There's the re-establishment of national government. There is the re restoration of the land itself. Where are we headed? So there's no more hope-filled chapter in the Bible than Jeremiah 31. I agree completely. And so you're saying that if 30 is the time of Jacob's trouble, then it follows right into the most glorious passages. That's true. You know, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, Paul says. Yes. It is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. Yes. First for the Jew yes. and then for the non-Jew or the Gentile. But it goes on to say something else in the book of Romans, chapter 2. There will be wrath and tragedy, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. Mm. But honour and glory there will be, yes. first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. So I believe the re-establishment of the nation of Israel, the restoration of the land, and the re-establishment of democratic government, even if you read the words carefully, are described in 30 through 31. Where is it leading to? I will make a new covenant mm. with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It won't <coughs> be like the covenant I made with them when I brought them out of Egypt, even though I was a husband to them, because they broke my covenant. This will be the covenant that I make with them in those days, says the Lord. I will write my law on their hearts. And of course it goes on to say some incredible things. No man, in those days, nobody will say to their neighbour, Know the Lord, because they will all know me. Mm -hmm. From the least to the greatest. For I will forgive them their sin. And remember their sin no more. Now, of course, of course, there was a, an, an initial fulfilment of this on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit was poured out on the people of Jerusalem that were listening to Peter. And many of them came into the, the new covenant at that time. 
But ultimately, this nation as a whole is coming back to the Lord and will enter that new covenant because it is a covenant that God is making and has made with them. Now it's interesting, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Of course, Jeremiah is talking at a time when the kingdom has been split into right. north and south. Right. There's going to be a reunification. Right. We're talking Israel as a totality. All Israel will be saved. Mm -hmm. And their return to this land is prerequisite, in my opinion, to their return to the Lord. It seems that Scripture says such. Oh, I think it they does. Will, uh, I will bring them to the land and I will forgive their sins. So, so, so we disconnect. We disconnect the time of Jacob's trouble, in my opinion, from what might be a global crisis situation in the years leading up to the return of Jesus the return of Yeshua I mean we're going to face incredible difficulties in the nations as a whole and we need to be prepared for that of course many um, dispensationalists for example recognise that maybe <coughs> before any of this terrible stuff happens the church will be raptured out personally I don't see that in scripture I think the Lord prepares us for very difficult times in the world as a whole. Nations will be in anguish, Jesus says, about the things that are going to be happening in the world. So I want to ask a question about, uh, back about 1945. Um, are you saying that that period of time, the Holocaust, was a fulfillment? It, it was a, a fulfillment or the fulfillment? It's a very good question, Bob. I think it's the completion of what Jesus spoke about, the times of the Gentiles. Yes. Okay. And therefore the time of Jacob's trouble maybe could be extended over a very, very long period. Jewish people have suffered like no other people throughout yes. history. Uh, the Holocaust, in, to my mind, is the completion of, of, of that time of Jacob's trouble. Uh, that's not to wow. say there's I not mean, going to be difficulties in the future. Yeah, there's I going mean, to be difficulties in the future. I mean, it just got worse and worse until the 1200s, the 1300s, and it didn't let up. It didn't yeah, let up. I know, it's I mean, true. I mean, until... people speak a lot about prof a prophecy, for example, in Zechariah chapter 13, about two-thirds of the people Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. To see this as a future event, to my mind, I can't accept that. As far as the Jewish people are concerned. Because, if you know the events of the first century, the destruction of Jerusalem yes. under the armies of Titus, also, very significantly, the destruction of Jerusalem in total at the time of Hadrian, the Bar Kokhba rebellion yes. in the second century, Almost certainly two-thirds of the population died at that time. And I think probably, only the Lord knows, throughout history, it may be true that two-thirds of the people of Israel have perished through all the various different things. This is, to see again yes. as a future event, I think, yes. is a denial of what history tells us. And, and well, the Holocaust did take the lives of two-thirds of European Absolutely Jews true. and one-third of worldwide Jews, Absolutely right? Absolutely true. Absolutely true. The numbers are very meaningful. And, and I've heard this one-third, two-third, that this, even in Jewish study, in North, you know, they, those are very meaningful numbers. They are. And them. you can go back into the, the prophecy of Ezekiel. I think it's chapter 5, if I remember rightly. The Lord is saying about, talking about judgment, but he's talking about judgment in thirds. Obviously, at that time, looking at the city or the nation of Israel as it was in the days of Jeremiah and Ezekiel, almost certainly two-thirds of the people perished at that time as well. So there is judgment in those thirds. Actually, when you look into the book of Revelation and you see th that which most of it may still be to come in terms of a global crisis, yes. all those judgments are spoken about in thirds. It's really interesting. In the book of Revelation. Yes. A third yes. of this. A third of this. Yes. A third of this. So that we as believers worldwide have to be prepared 
for very difficult days. We're not going to get lifted out of it, in my opinion. We have to go through it. He who endures to the end yes. will be saved. Having said that, I believe that when God pours out his spirit on this land in Israel, as I believe he promises to do, all eyes will be opened. And um, I think amazing things are going to be happening in this country. And so, you're, and so you're very comfortable living here <laughs> yes. if since 2010 to the present day oh uh, I, I don't do, think we're going anywhere else yes i still feel yes. very english or very yes. british <laughs> uh, i do speak hebrew a tiny bit uh, i can speak it more but this is our home now yeah well uh we'll put the uh, information in the book you know on this uh, yes. segment and uh if people have questions uh, would you accept an Absolutely. email from people okay please, well we'll put please, your please email we'll, we'll put your email address true. up as well so this has been great. I'm Thank so you. happy to have uh, been able to talk with you about this. Um, I think what you have to say is, uh, has a lot of merit. And um, I, perhaps we have we've missed this and we have not given uh, God credit for having put his people through such difficult times. Um, and, uh, uh, and maybe we do need to see the future of Israel in a... Uh, in a much more uh, prosperous uh, manner than, than, than we have. I mean, it's not just about survival, perhaps, and it's, it's about, uh, well, Lord, may they thrive. Amen. Uh, yeah. so, so, so thank you, and I uh, hope you've enjoyed this, and we uh, would uh, love to hear from you, uh, both comments on this uh, blog and uh, with uh, Jeff. And so until next time, this is Bob Odell with Root Source saying goodbye and shalom. Shalom from me.